Hey everybody, my name is Patrick Fingler and in this tech tip video we're going to take a look at how to retrieve information collected in a form using expressions within Vertigis Studio Workflow. Let's see it in action. Alright, so here you can see I have logged into the Workflow Designer and I have an empty design area or canvas to get started. Um, so we're going to go ahead here and use our toolbox control and search for a display form and drag it onto our design canvas here. And let's go ahead and double click our display form to actually customize it a little bit. Um, and let's search for, we'll start out really simple here and search for a text box control and just drag it onto the design area. Um, now each of these form elements are going to have their own properties associated with them. And more importantly, they're also going to have an element ID. So this text box control has an element ID of text box one. The header control has an element ID of header. And this button bar at the bottom has an element ID of the footer. So basically, I might want to present a form to ask the user for some type of text input, maybe, you know, uh, ask for their name. Um, and I want to then retrieve the value of that text box or of the name that they entered and do something with it. So if we jump back to the beginning of our workflow, um, in order to actually then retrieve that information and then pass it to another activity, I'm going to use um, an alert for this, which basically is just gonna present an alert dialog to the user Basically, in this scenario, I'm just going to present a dialog of the value that the user entered dynamically into that text box. So let's drag this alert onto this form. And you'll see here there's some required inputs um, and we're having some we have some validation warnings. So in order for this um, activity to run, it needs to have some text input. You can see here, um, if you hover over it, this is going to tell you the type of input required. So um, the foundational scripting logic of workflow is JavaScript. So it is JavaScript based. So the different objects that you're working with are going to be, you know, follow the, the JavaScript rules and syntax. Um, so if I open this in a new tab, basically you can learn more about what exactly is a string, but basically in short, a string is a text object basically so you can look at some examples so this would be considered a string where you have two quotes around some text you can have single quotes uh, and then you can also use these back ticks as well this is called template literal um, to also define a string and i'll be covering these in a, in a moment here additionally so if you go back to the workflow here the simplest method too would be you could hard code some um, text into here so we could call this you know hello world, and we no longer have that validation warnings. Um, it's also worth mentioning that this is the exact same as if I was to type equals and add some double quotes around this. So we have double quotes and we're basically saying that this is a string. And then I can also add single quotes. That will also work. Or this backtick notation as well, which is called template literals. Um, so both of those options work. But in our scenario, rather than hard coding a value in here, we want to dynamically retrieve the value that the user entered in that form. So in order to do that, you can actually add a dollar sign. So equals then dollar sign, and this will find all of the activities within your workflow. So for example, if I added I know, a buffer activity and had it just over here, um, the next time I add a dollar sign, we're going to see we have buffer one as well as form one being included in this list. Um, we want to select form one because ultimately we want the value within of the text box within the form. So I've now selected form one. If I add a period, I can get some kind of code completion, which is really nice. So the result property for the form is just gonna basically be what was the result of the form? Did they click submit or did they click cancel? And you can see it's also of type string. If we drill into the state of the form and add a period, I'm gonna get a list of all of the different form elements. So here's our footer, our header, and our text box. Um, you can also give yourself more space as well using this expand control. And you can also use the control and uh, scroll wheel to zoom in as well. Um, so I'm gonna search for text box, which is our text box control. 
at another period. And then these are going to be the properties of the text box. So we are interested in the value, which again is of type string, which is just text that the user entered into that text box. You can see we're now happy. It's um, the validation is correct. I'll go ahead and click OK. Give this a save and call this uh, tech tip videos form input and click save. And again, I can use our sandbox to run this. So I'll go to the info tab here, run it in our sandbox environment. Just go ahead and run the workflow and enter my name as Patrick and click submit. And now it says Patrick. So there we can see we're now dynamically retrieving the value that I entered into that form. Excuse me. So let's go a step further. Let's say I need to get a first name and a last name. So let's uh, double click this display form here and add just a, another text box. And let's call this last name and we'll call this first name. Uh, you can see here, this is text box one and this is text box two. Um, so let's go back and look, uh, open up our alert. And so right now, this is going to be my first name. Now, how I want to then, you know, I basically I want to include my first name and my last name. That can be done by writing a little in uh, expression. So the standard approach, um, or the simplest approach, I should say, would probably be using um, concatenation, which basically you can add a little plus sign anytime you want to join something. Um, but uh, in this scenario, we might want to add a space between our first and our last name. So I can add a little uh, single quote or a double quote and close that. So basically here I'm adding a, a space character. Uh, and then if I add another plus, I basically want to then retrieve the value of my last name um, element. So I'm going to drill into my form, go into the state of the form, find text box two, which is my last name, add a period and get the value of that. So here, this will be my first name, we'll have a space, and this will be my last name. So let's go ahead and again, rerun this. Uh, you don't actually have to save it when you're in the sandbox. You can just go ahead and rerun it. You can see we've got my first name, Patrick, last name, Fingler. And if I click submit, I now have a space here with my first name and last name. Now it's also worth mentioning, like as you're designing your workflows, um, these element IDs don't really make a lot of sense. So you can also edit them. So I might actually wanna call this like my first name and I might wanna change the element ID of this and call it my last name. So it's a little bit easier for me to find as I'm searching for these. If I go back to my workflow here and go to the alert, you can see here it's actually um, percolating those changes throughout the rest of your workflow. So any time you're referencing that form element, it's going to replace the ID. So um, that's really, really nice. Um, similarly, you can call, see how this is called form one. I could also change this to like, I don't know, user form or something like that. Um, and you'll see here it's also being updated. And again, as I start to drill into my form, we'll also see those changes being included. Now this is what we're seeing is standard concatenation. Uh, again, you can also include um, you know, double quotes here as well. Uh, another thing uh, or way of building these expressions uh, can be done using template literals, which uh, is accomplished using what are called backticks. So here I'm gonna add a backtick and a backtick. And basically what's nice with this is that you don't need to worry about single quotes or double quotes or anything like that. Um, so basically, as you just start typing, I could say, you know, this is my first name and then I want to then pass in this value and then I might want to have a space and call this my last name. Now, the only thing to be aware of is if you want to dynamically retrieve these values or uh, these variables, um, you need to just add a dollar sign and a curly brace in front and behind it. And that will then recognize this as an actual variable and not as a hard-coded string. So I'll just do the same thing for my last name. I'll add a little dollar sign and a curly brace behind that. Um, and so basically here, this will be first name. We'll dynamically get the first name. 
space, last name, and then we'll dynamically get the last name. And within here, you can again see that we can still dynamically get that code completion. So let's go ahead and save this, or we don't have to save it, but we'll save it and rerun it. And I'll just do Patrick F, click Submit. You can see first name, Patrick, last name, F. And if you wanna learn more about these expressions, I'd recommend going to our documentation center um, and navigating to the expression section. And this is where you can learn a little bit more about the different type of expression syntax with kind of standard concatenation versus the template literal uh, approach. Bye for now. Never miss the Vertiges Studio Tech Tip. Like and subscribe below. And as always, you can learn more by visiting vertigist.com.